This is the VacMaster VP330. For a sense of scale, I'll put my hand there. Kind of gives you an idea. I guess this guy is about maybe three feet long. It is incredibly heavy. I cannot lift it by myself, and I'm a fairly strong young pup. Uh, sometimes it takes two people, and to lift it all the way up onto this counter here it takes about three people. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say it weighs maybe 150 pounds. Um, very heavy, but very sturdy, very reliable. It is about four years old, um, actually going on five years old. This is our fifth season with it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a big, heavy box uh, to open up. You've got a little latch on this side. You've also got a latch on this side, but we never use both. Let that down. Over time, you'll, you'll probably want to put some WD-40 in these joints right here because um, after you use it for a while, it gets less and less enthusiastic about lifting itself up automatically. Inside, you've got your seal bars here, the long one here, and this other short one here. You've got your press bars, which are these. It might be kind of hard to see, but these are little uh, rubbery kind of feeling feet that when you close this down, it meets up with those seal feet and it presses together and keeps your bags together. So you've got a short one here, long one here, and another short one here to match all of these. And inside here, you have these kind of cutting board looking things. These <clears throat> are really good for uh, you know, if you've got like a fat package that stands up tall, uh, you can take these out to give it more space. Or if you've got like a thin package, like for us, our boneless skinless chicken breast is a super thin package. So sometimes when we're doing breast, we'll take these, move these over so there's a little more, um, you know, so it doesn't sit too low when you're trying to get your, uh, get your vacuum bags over this. Other important things. Uh, so you've got, of course, your instrument cluster here. We'll talk about what these four, uh, uh, dials here mean you've got your on off switch you've got your lever here or switch or whatever you want to call it that will um, allow you to vary which ones of the seal bars are actually functioning so you can actually turn on all three uh, i think you can do that one and that one and then you can do just this one this guy sat out in the sun was exposed to the sun for a really long time so all that stuff there's like little indicators here that show you which bars are actually active uh, this is turned off, but we always have all three bars active, so we don't really care. Um, on the side of the unit, you've got your, let's see, there's an oil drain here. And then you've got an oil fill here. And there's a sight glass diagram here. This is probably the big thing that I really don't like about this unit is that the sight glass is there and it's super cloudy. You can't see it. You can't tell. <laughs> exactly how much oil is in the thing so best thing to do is i like to change the oil in this thing i'm paranoid so i change it once a month um drain all the oil out you can get this off with a uh, with a standard lug wrench that seems like kind of an awkward gauge but actually a, a standard lug wrench is all you need that'll get it right off it's the perfect size um, but drain all the oil out and then Fill it to the point where you think it's about halfway, and if you look in your instruction manual, it, it shows you uh, what the capacity is, and you'll be able to kind of guesstimate. If you wind up with a unit like mine that's got a cloudy sight glass, maybe if you get something new, they've improved that and gotten rid of that, and you'll actually be able to see, and you won't have to guess. But in any case, I've never had an issue with it. Um, oops, I think that's upside down. I've never had an issue with it. Um, if you overfill it, you're gonna get some extra oil coming out of the back here, and um, that seems to be the only real consequence. So it might be a little bit better to overfill a little bit than to underfill and wind up with this thing smoking, because my homeboy has one of these things, didn't change the oil in it, and there was definitely heat and smoke and unpleasantness all around. God help you when you have to lift this thing. Uh, you got these handles here. These feel flimsy, but they're shockingly strong. Um, they're not gonna, they're not gonna bend. They're not gonna break on you. They, they do hold the load of the machine, but uh, they don't feel great. Uh, so again, you're gonna need pretty strong people to be able to lift this thing up and down and move it. Um, it helps to have it up high. I know it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it up high, but ideally you won't have to move this thing around much. Um, but if you're, especially a tall guy like me, I'm 6'3", um, having this thing up high and being able to work on it Standing straight up really saves your back, especially if you're doing, if we're doing rounds of 350 birds or whatever, having somebody leaning over this thing at like a 30, 40 degree angle for hours at a time is just gonna wear you out. So the higher you can get it up to about, you know, your belly level um, is probably best. So to turn this thing on, you take the switch and you flip it clockwise. 
Um, this will come on, those two little bars under there means that everything is cool. Now, I've never messed with the, with the factory defaults on this thing. So you can press this set button so you can set the amount of vacuum time. You can't mess with the gas, I don't even know what that means. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can set the amount of time it takes to seal, um, which gives you a harder or lighter seal. And then the cooling part, which I also kind of don't really know what that is and I haven't really messed with it. Um, so again, I'm a poultry farmer dealing with you know very perishable uh, type stuff. Didn't really have to mess with the defaults. But in case you ever do, um, you can set the, uh, press the set button, it'll take you to vacuum, it'll tell you the amount of time that it will vacuum by default. You can set this to be lower or higher. Um, I kept it at the default of 32. Um, hit set again, it'll take you down to the amount of sealing time. This seems to be like this. This gives you a tighter or a uh, or a less tight seal. So again, you can you can put this up or down. Um, I like to have it at the maximum. I want that seal nice and tight because we're dealing with meat. Um, and then you can also set the cooling setting, which again I also haven't messed with and haven't really felt the need to. So that's that. So I personally don't see any reason why you'd want to mess with the sealing time or the cooling time. Never had the need, but the vacuum time can be a big deal. So if you're doing poultry and stuff that needs to have like all the air taken out, you want as much air as possible out, you have stuff that's super perishable, um, you want that vacuum time to be fairly long, um, at least 30 seconds. But if you're doing something like packaging chips, pork rinds, something that you don't want it to be super tight because if you do, it might crumble it or break it, um, then you can set this time, you know, way down as much as you want. Or if you just wanna, if you wanna do it custom, then while you're sealing, when you when you lower this thing, and I'll show you how that works, you lower it and it start to seal, um, you can hit this red stop button at any time and then it'll stop and then go through the gas seal and cool process and stop it there. So, you know, you, you slam the thing down, it makes this huge noise. Um, and whenever you think you're good, you just hit stop and then it'll that'll be the end of it. So to get it to actually seal, there is no like on button or start button or anything. Uh, it's just once you have it on, you see the two bars here. Um, once you close this guy, it'll start. And notice that anytime you can hit this button, that would be the seal. And then again, uh, usually if your bearings are well greased under there, this will lift by itself, but sometimes it needs a little help. So for tips about actually using this thing and maintaining it, uh, the first one is uh, when I have new guys start to use this thing, they tend to want to like slam the living crap out of it. Uh, that is not necessary. You can gently lower it and you'll notice that when it starts, you'll see it like kind of comes all the way down here, but doesn't quite close. And then it eventually kind of just seals itself after you just apply some pressure. So let's see if we can check that out. <laughs> see that so then at that point you know hands free it's uh it keeps itself sealed and it keeps going so the other thing is that once this lifts back up so a thing will happen where if it sits there not quite opening it eventually throw an error code in the uh in the console there let's wait for it there it is so it'll give you that f1 thing if you get that f1 code just lift this back up turn this guy off and back on and it'll be just fine. The next most important thing uh, and the most everyday kind of thing is that when you're putting your vacuum bags along here, you have to be really careful to make sure you don't have any creases in your bag. It has to be completely smooth. Otherwise it's gonna give you a little hole and it's gonna allow air in. It's gonna allow things like freezer burn and stuff like that you don't want. So I've actually got a chicken here to demonstrate. One of my whole chicken since I'm right after a kill. Um, pro tip, uh, you've got the back of the bird here and you've got the breast of the bird here things get easier for you if you put it breast side down and then when you're gonna seal this guy make sure you pull these taut and when you put that down give it a nice kind of smooth out so see here there's no creases whatsoever so if you, you, know, if you have some kind of a new guy just like throw this in here and they just kind of put it down you know like that like, see those creases right there? That's gonna leave holes, the air's gonna get in, you're not gonna get a great seal, you're gonna get freezer burn, all that good stuff. So, make sure that you've got that nice and smooth, pull it out, take your time and do it right. So again, we'll demonstrate real quick. Simply lower that down, wait for it to fully seal. You'll see that guy start to kind of expand a little bit. So we talked about changing the oil often. 
Um, and the last thing is the seal bars. And this was kind of the big gotcha. After I've been running this thing for about two and a half years, we started to notice that our seals were getting really inconsistent. Sometimes it sealed well, sometimes it didn't. Um, it would especially seal well across the main bar, but not across the side bars. And the reason for that is that this tape, um, this brown thing right here is replaceable and it comes off because eventually this tape wears out because of all that heat. You're applying heat over and over and over and over and over again. And the same thing with these little rubber things here. These will also eventually start to wear out. So you'll need to replace those every now and then. Um, the replacement parts are available on the VacMaster website. Um, they're not terribly expensive, very easy to replace. These bars come straight off. And I'm gonna to try to do this without the depth perception. All right, so that brown tape, you can just take that corner and this whole thing will peel off. And then you can replace it with this uh, 3M seal tape that you can just get. Um, I think you can even get it at Uline, but it's definitely on the uh, on the Backmaster website. So you'll wanna replace these. I don't know, I, I try to replace them maybe every 3,000 birds or so. Um, you don't have to do it super often. It's not really expensive. It only takes a few minutes, um, not hard at all. And then with these, these come right out. So you can just you know go ahead and peel that right out and they'll send you as a replacement i might have, have to do both hands with that so sorry um but your replacements are going to come like as these big long i think they're like six feet long so you have to cut them to size really easy cut really easy with a knife they're just they're just rubber basically um replace those again like every maybe three thousand birds or so other last little thing to take a look at is this is the plug it's a standard 110 it's not a 220 so you don't have to have any kind of special uh electrical outlet it'll just plug right into your to your regular wall unit so that is really it um this is the vacmaster vp330 great unit great for a small mid-sized uh operation if you're doing this for farming applications non-farming applications i don't really know about because i'm not not a farmer i don't know why you'd need this but um couldn't recommend it more highly it is great I am a poultry farmer, a grass-based poultry farmer. So we raise birds on pasture, we process them ourselves in this shop on our kill floor that's right over there. And I've done as few as 3,000 birds in a year and as many as I think 6,500. So going into next year, we're gonna be doing maybe about 10 or 11,000 birds. Um, this unit should work just fine. When we started 10 years ago, we started with the, you know, the standard heat shrink bags. I think a lot of people start out that way. Um, it wasn't great. Uh, you got freezer burn issues with heat shrink bags. You've got quality issues. Um, but the big one is the fact that the ones that we used to use usually make you take the water temperature up to about 180 degrees. And when you dunk that guy into, usually it's a turkey fryer or some kind of big cylinder, uh, 180 degrees is gonna start to cook your breast and you're gonna start having quality issues, especially with uh, restaurants and people that need that perfect scald and you can't really afford to have your stuff baking at 180 degrees even for a few seconds because it takes that long uh, to cook breast. So we graduated to um, the small little uh, VacMaster model. You could only do, I think it was usually one bag at a time, like a little uh, eight by 10 bag. Uh, it was super small, really inefficient. Uh, it's that model, that small model is really meant for people that are doing home use type stuff. So this was our first big upgrade into uh, into a commercial model. Um, super quick, we're able to do four whole chickens at a time. Chickens range in between uh, four and five pounds dressed. Uh, you can get four of those guys in there at once. Um, it takes about 30, 40 seconds for the process to run on those four birds, about 10 seconds per bird. So it's, it's pretty quick. Uh, we might have to buy a second one for next year when we're doing as many birds as we're doing. We're going to be going through about 350 a week for 34 straight weeks. So we're probably going to have to get two. But in the meantime, uh, this is a great model if you're going you know, somewhere between, I'd say, three and 3,000 and 7,500 birds. I think this unit is fine, won't create any bottlenecks, and will really be a great tool for your operation.